Hi, I am Dr. April Willis, and I am here today with Proximity Learning, and I'm so excited to share with you all the information about teaching with us here at Proximity Learning, also known as PLI. When you hear those letters, please know that we are talking about the same company. I am also really excited to have with me on this webinar today two of our highly esteemed educators, our virtual teachers, Joseph and Diana, are going to be joining us today. We also have a couple of our HR reps. So we have John and Sam, who will be speaking to us with all things HR related, and they're going to be answering those questions around courses, curriculum, your benefits, the compensation schedule, all of that good stuff. We've got Joseph and Diana who are going to be speaking about what does it look like to teach virtually? How does it compare to your brick and mortar? How are you managing relationships and student behaviors? So you're really gonna be hearing the best of both worlds when it comes to working with PLI. I'm here to help moderate the question and answers. So we do have some pre-developed questions that we're gonna start with. As these questions come up, you're going to hear some that are geared towards the teachers, some that are geared towards HR. We do encourage you throughout, if you are seeing a subject be discussed, but it has sparked a question, please do feel free to drop it in the chat. At the very end, we're going to have time where you can ask all of your questions that weren't previously answered within the presentation organically. Uh, I can tell you the last time we did this session, though, we definitely ran up to the very last minute, and there were a lot of question and answers, so we do hope that we'll be able to maximize the use of our time because we do want to honor everybody's one hour commitment. And uh, with that, I'm also just going to let you all know if you are watching this webinar as an audience member, we can't hear you and we can't see you. So the only way we can communicate with you is through the chat. And um, please know that you can send the chat to hosts and all panelists, or you can send it directly to me uh, if you would prefer to do it that way. And then I will be reading these out loud to our panelists. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first of all, I want to hear from Joseph, if you don't mind telling us what you teach and where you teach across the country, all the different schools you might be at. Okay. Um, hi, I'm Joseph. I'm in Chicago. Um, I teach uh, science, physical science, including phys physics and chemistry, and also Mandarin Chinese as, as a foreign language. And uh, so far, I've been with the PLI for over a decade. And so I have no excuses. Uh, I have taught from California to Connecticut and the north from uh, Michigan and all the way to Tennessee and Texas. Um, so it's across the border, many states back and forth. Very good. Well, thanks so much for being on the call with us, Joseph. We're excited to learn a little bit more about you and your teaching experience with PLI. Diana, let's go to you, if you don't mind just telling me what you teach and where you teach across the country. Hi, I'm Diana. This is my fourth year with PLI. I am currently teaching Algebra 1, an eighth grade Algebra 1 honors class in Tennessee. There's two classes of those. I am teaching geometry in Texas and I'm teaching algebra two in Texas. I've also taught at South Carolina, um, other Tennessee classes, uh, Kentucky. So across the, across the country and I'm from Virginia. Very cool. Well, as long as we're talking about your educational background and experiences in teaching, why did you decide to transition to virtual teaching? So my transition was, um, I left a couple years ago. I had my daughter at the beginning of the school year and I was pregnant with my son by the end of the school year. So I just wanted to spend more time with my kids at home, you know, teaching full time can be very time consuming. And I felt like I missed out a lot on my daughter's first year. So I ended up leaving the brick and mortar and then came across proximity learning. And it was a blessing that I couldn't have asked <laughs> to be better for. I got to work part-time, still do what I love, and also be home with my kids. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing. Joseph, you've been doing this since before it was popular. So I mean, <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, I was teaching uh, in Chicago for a while, and uh, that was way before the, the uh, pandemic or anything. And uh, then, you know, Chicago, I don't know how long have you been um, all of us, um, some of you may know there is a movement for middle school movement. And so Chicago was the seat of like a major experiment. You know, Paul Vallis is the CEO of Chicago and uh, the, the, the public school system. And so 
there was a huge amount of changes in Chicago in those years. And then, you know, then they came, then the mayor wanted to introduce the Mandarin Chinese into the curriculum, Mayor Daly, the famous Daly family. So when that started, um, so there was a huge fight between the um, the union and uh, and also the budget cuts in the early 2000s. So then, you know, eventually they asked me if I they want me to teach science. But in Chicago, we were not equipped with labs and all that stuff. And so I decided to instead of teaching science, I'm just going to find a place that where I can teach, continue to teach foreign language. If I need to teach science, then I can teach online. Maybe I will find some you know, uh, web website, uh, virtual labs and stuff. But those days were rare. So that's how I made the transition. I never looked back. Oh, that's so neat. And since you've made that transition and it has become pretty popular for people to teach virtually, how does that make you feel? Are you excited we're headed in this direction? Or what do you think? <laughs> I, I always believed that. I always thought that because my first uh, degree, I was not, um, how should I say, a kind of... Uh, like a study undergrad as a teaching major. My first degree was in engineering. I always thought uh, the most of the teaching, classroom teaching, especially the secondary and even college basic courses can be done online because the labs are uh, exorbitantly uh, amount of money to, to build a real good, you know, exploratory labs and stuff. So right. I always thought I want to teach online. That's great. And just as you had mentioned about the higher ed definitely being in a position to where virtual makes sense, I do want to make sure everybody on the call knows today that as of today, proximity learning is only serving K through 12. And so if you were coming on because you were hoping to hear something around higher ed, that's not something that we offer at this time. So we are K through 12 virtual instruction. Let's go to our next question. What is your advice to educators thinking about teaching virtually? I'll start with Diana again. I think it's a great opportunity. Um, there may be various reasons why educators would choose proximity learning. I mean, health and safety, I know, has been a big issue the last couple of years. Um, teachers have been put in compromised positions. And with proximity, you can be at home, be safe, um, be with your families. I think it's great you know, health reasons. For sure. Joseph, what would you like to add about that? Absolutely. I would say switch ASAP because that's the future of fundamental education, you know, uh, not just the, the panel, the, 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 the pandemic that we, we experienced. It's this, the, uh, we have more children, more schools uh, opening in the neighborhood, and that's a lot of costs, especially if you want to teach it well uh, in science and, and stuff. For so, sure. and the computer is like, uh, in the old days, if you teach a foreign language, you use a computer, uh, a language lab, a language lab is only University of Chicago here has a language lab. And I went there to use it and to advise them how to build the language lab uh, in terms of the devices, you know, the hardware and stuff. But those days, this is all obsolete. <laughs> you know, yeah. I think it switch ASAP, sorry. Yeah, no, I would agree. I, I do feel like anybody who's thinking about teaching virtually, it makes sense to start doing it now. It is an opportunity, as Diana had mentioned, if it's a time for you to be with your family, you have the option opportunity to travel, you have the opportunity to work from almost anywhere. Uh, there is a lot of flexibility that comes with this in terms of building your own schedule. So most of us coming from brick and mortar, we were there from at least seven in the morning till four or five in the evening. And you don't have to do that as a virtual educator anymore. You get to pick a schedule that makes sense for you. And that's really beneficial. So I would say some of my advice would be to take advantage of that while it still exists. Uh, and another piece of advice that I have is I really do feel like uh, oftentimes we heard a lot of negative stuff around virtual education when the pandemic had first occurred. We started hearing about students who were missing more class. The students who were going to class weren't performing well. And there was just kind of a slew of problems that people were identifying, saying that this just isn't realistic. And I would say my advice in response to all of that would be, it didn't feel realistic because we forced teachers into a virtual environment with little to no training and by no choice of their own. So they were not equipped to succeed in the virtual classroom. However, when you make this choice, we are giving you everything you need from the personnel support, lesson planning support. We're helping you place in classrooms where schools have chosen this model. The students have access to the hardware and the devices that they need 
need to be effective using utilizing this model. So everything falls into place. And because of that, I would say any fears you have about virtual education not being an effective model of education, I would just ask you to reconsider that based on how we have established it as a solid model of education for the K-12 environment. So let's talk about some advantages of teaching virtually with proximity learning. I'm actually going to start with John, who's going to talk to us from the HR perspective. So hello, everyone. As you've already heard, um, proximity learning offers you a lot of flexibility. So if you still want to educate kids, but be able to be at home with your kids, but also do some of the things that you like to do, it's the best place to work. I know I'm a former principal and I've been dreaming of this since 2010. I thought this was the way forward. Like Joseph just said, this is the way forward in education. But you also get to increase your, um, techn your technology. You also get to apply for our National Virtual Teachers Association, which is really, really cool. Um, April Willis manages that for us. But um, this is a great way for you to educate kids, but also educate your own students and be there with them all day long if you choose to do so. Awesome, thank you. And Joseph, just from a teacher perspective, what are some advantages of teaching virtually with proximity? Oh, you stop me when, when, when I uh, don't stop. <laughs> I, I tell you, first of all, there is this a vast um, treasure trove of online sources. And if the pharmaceuticals can design drugs with simulated uh, reactions and chemical reactions, and that's definitely can be accomplished for teaching basic level of chemistry and science. And once you have that, you are not limited in a physical lab. And this is a vast, and also reaching in terms of, I had five students in the middle of nowhere in Michigan. They wanted to study Chinese. This was like a 20, uh, 10, yeah, 10 years ago, maybe. And so those days that the school district would not uh, hire a Chinese teacher or who's gonna travel there to, to teach that. And I taught them, um, they, we met regularly. So this is one. And the other one is that the, you have saved so much time in terms of traveling, commuting, and organizing your offices, because if you organize your desktop with an attached um, hard drive, you have, I have terabytes of teaching stuff. And you have all kinds of, especially the last five years, we have had so many apps and, and yeah, online devices. The, um, and we have like, a, what is it? We have a troops of, of uh, experts on, a, uh, on our team who explore and do PD, teach us how to use certain apps for discipline specific. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I would also just echo that. I see the amount of professional development opportunities almost on a daily basis. An email will come through from an expert instructional coach or vice principal or principal saying, hey guys, come hang out with me today at four o'clock. I'm going to show you everything you need to know about XYZ products or platforms or services. Uh, there's just a ton of support. So another one of those concerns we often hear from educators entering the virtual environment is I feel like I'm on an island doing this alone. And again, that is not the case here at Proximity Learning. You will never feel alone. You will grow so many friendships so quickly, and you are going to have access to continuing professional development because since this is our business, we want to be successful. We want you to be successful. So we will never just throw you out there and wish you the best. Like we are going to equip you with all of the training and the resources and the support and the feedback that you need so that you can make the best of this situation. So thanks so much for sharing your perspective on that. Let's talk a little bit about the differences between teaching virtually versus brick and mortar roles. Before I point that question to somebody though, I would like to kind of put our attention on the chat. Right now there is a lot of interaction happening in the chat, which is wonderful, but I am going to start losing your questions because a lot of these are just comments. If you have a question, please use the Q&A feature, and that's where we're going to start answering questions from. We won't be able to manage all of the questions coming through in the chat box alone, so please do use that Q&A box. We see the 13 questions that are in there now. We will answer them when the time is right, so we're just collecting questions in the Q&A box. All right, so what are the differences between teaching virtually versus brick and mortar roles? Let's start with Joseph. You can sleep in. <laughs> Number one, <laughs> if your class is not early, of course, there are certain classes. I taught a class, you know, the time difference. Some days, some years are better, but some years are having early hours. But also, 
you are much safer. When I was teaching uh, in brick and mortar in Chicago, I every single year got whatever my students had, flus, colds. It's like a, being a pediatrician. They say the first three years, you're never good. Yeah. You're always sick. You know, after that, you de develop immunity. And that's is a safety. And depending on which school you teach, in Chicago, I taught in a school which was very, very poor neighborhood. And it was very uh, difficult because they have metal detectors to come in and going, you know, inside the building premise. And so those things are you completely protected from. For sure. Uh, and what about that commute? You have to drive very far to go from your bed to your office in your own house. <laughs> Um, I try to build um, an office, um, like a different room, and I happen to like, you know, uh, hardware, like computers, not, not software. I'm not a coder or anything. So I set it up and I have all things. And, and also I try to build an hour that you, you get up and go to bed and get up in the morning, have coffee and, you know, you're up and you have a lot more energy when you are not actually inside the brick and mortar room that also I'm not no longer sort of uh, the uh, supervising the lunch room, for example. Yeah. And I no longer sort of uh, supervise the uh, the playground. You know, yeah. winter Chicago playground is, is very cold. I or did that for years. Pop off lines, right? Where you have to stand outside and wait for the kids to get out of their cars and go Absolutely. home. Absolutely. Right. Physical safety. Exactly. I had, a, I taught in a school if one child had to go to the bathroom, you take the whole class to the bathroom, you stand yeah. in, at the door of the bathroom with one eye, see the eye, the aisle that, that where the hallway they line up, the other eye, you see the bathroom. Yeah. Then you bring I them all back. Days. I remember those days and this is definitely different. Diana, what would you like to add as the difference between teaching virtually versus brick and mortar? I like the personality that you can have like personability we can have with the students. So, you know, you're on a Zoom call and some of your students may be a little more on the shyer side and didn't want to like ask a question in front of the entire class. They can actually personally message you like how we're doing right now. And only I will see the questions. So I can address, you know, things that may be unclear to them out loud or just chat them back and just answer their questions. And I feel like they get more of a personal education rather than in a class brick and mortar where you know they may not get that one-on-one -on -one, um feeling for sure yeah absolutely thanks for sharing that um i would also add that we're not having to go to a lot of parent nights or parent meetings like you typically would in a brick and mortar um there isn't a, a teacher's lounge in which you just gossip about your students and you get demoralized hearing about the other people's bad days uh, i feel like that's something that i actually appreciated because that was one of the most negative places on campus was the teacher's lounge and it was just really refreshing to get to be at a place where what you're hearing from other educators is how excited they are to be doing the work that they're doing, how much they appreciate their schedules and their students and the support that they're getting from other people. It's just, it's a definitely a different feeling. Okay, so let's talk about how flexible scheduling is for classes. I see your questions, y'all. I see 33 open questions. I thank you for that. We're starting to answer some of them in here. So I'm gonna go through and hit some of these as answered as we get to them. But let's talk about how flexible scheduling is and Sam, we haven't heard from you. Let's hear what you've got to say. Uh, scheduling is really flexible. So we require our teachers to have at least four hours of availability um, each day, Monday through Friday. That's because most of our classes meet Monday through Friday. But as far as um, flexibility goes, we have so many different courses available. If you want to teach ninth grade English, you could teach ninth grade English all day long. If you want to teach, um, you know, 12th grade English and and deal with all the senioritis, you could do that as well. There's a lot of flexibility. Wonderful. And I know some people have been asking, do you guys do music? Do you do CTE? Do you have foreign languages? Do you have, yes, everything you're asking about, yes. So of course the most like hot topic subjects would be things like your math. I think Spanish is pretty much a hot topic. John, you wanna add, what are some more hot topic subjects right now? So Spanish, math, science, French, um, ELA has been big this year and elementary has been really big this year because of COVID because kids couldn't get vaccinated under the age of 
seven at one point. So, you know, that was an, a huge issue. So that's been really big. ASL is always big. So if you're an American Sign Language teacher, we're always looking for ASL teachers. Perfect. Yeah. And so uh, when we talk about scheduling flexibility, John, is there anything else you'd like to add to that? You really get to build your own schedule. So um, there are times that we might help you with the schedule or kind of merge your day together to make sure you have a full schedule if that's what you're looking for. But if you only want to work, let's say four hours a day, be able to pick the classes that you want to pick, teach those classes, and then go spend time with your family. So if you want to take your kids to school and pick them up every day, great. You can teach with us from 10 to 2 and pick up your kids after that, you know, take them to the park, do the things that you like to do. Or if you're going to grad school to get your PhD and you just want a lighter load, you could do that as well. But it's really flexible and you can always add classes. The only thing that we ask is that you not drop classes once you pick them up because we're doing a disservice to our students at that point in time. Absolutely agree with that. Thank you. I'm still seeing people ask, what about special education? Yes. What about reading? Yes. What about remedial classes? Yes. All of those things, almost anything you can get certified in, the answer is yes. We are always placing those. And what here's something you guys might on the, uh, if you're in the audience, you might be wondering is like, where are your schools? Our schools are all across the country. Proximity learning is not a school. We are not a private school. We are not a charter school. What we do is we essentially provide you all as staff who virtually live stream in existing schools. So let's say, for example, we have Dallas ISD on our contract. Dallas ISD might say, hey, we've got this elementary school that we just can't find a science teacher in the fourth grade for. Can you help us with that? All of those kiddos sit in that classroom and they are waiting for a teacher to come in and you get live streamed in. Now, what's great about that is let's say Dallas ISD is experiencing that problem with two of their schools. You can teach science fourth grade here, and then you can go teach science fourth grade there. You can do it back to back. If there's small classes, they can live stream you simultaneously into both of those classes. So you, and that is why there's so much flexibility is because you can do that at Dallas ISD. And then the next hour, you might be at a school in Oklahoma. And the next hour, you might be a school in Minnesota. You get to pick that and you go wherever the schedule you've created lets you go. As far as time zones, uh, the last time we did one of these webinars, the one of the teacher said, I start my day in the Virgin Islands and I end my day in Hawaii. Like that's pretty exciting. And you get to do that. So as long as you want to wake up early, stay up late, however you choose to do that, you can work across all of the time zones. All right. Hope that's helpful for everyone. Let's talk about proximity learning, offering professional development. Oh my goodness. The answer is yes. Let's talk about what kind we offer. John, let's start with you. So we offer a lot of PD. One, like National Virtual Teachers Association that I talked about earlier, that is very similar to national boards. And that will allow you to become a more effective virtual teacher. It is quite different teaching virtually because you're talking to a screen as I'm doing right now. And it's really hard to build rapport sometimes. So you really have to bring energy that Dr. Willis is bringing. She always is energetic. I don't think I've ever talked to her when she's not upbeat. But you really have to be upbeat. You have to get to know your kids at a deeper level. I know as a teacher, I was a, a guy that would walk by and give kids high fives and things of that nature. Now you actually have to communicate with them and talk to them. We also teach you or help you with project-based learning, inquiry-based learning. We help you facilitate, facilitate your classroom as well. And also managing your classroom is quite different virtually. So we teach you how to manage your classroom a little bit as well. That way you understand when to step in, when to take a step back, or maybe this isn't quite important. I shouldn't address it yet. So those are things that we try to help you out with. And then we're always building curriculum. We're always meeting with our teachers to talk to them about curriculum and how to provide great instruction every single day. Perfect. Love it. Is there anybody else that'd like to add to that, that you just want to throw yeah, something? Yeah. Else? Can I, can I add something? Yeah. Because we have such, uh, you know, uh, I'm just like a ordinary teacher. We have like, I met teachers, like amazing teachers who are like, have like industry experience with PhDs in discipline. And so, I always can go to someone like I can't find any answers. Like I don't know what what's going on. So I like how I'm going to find the materials to do that. And and I will have people always there knows a lot more than I do. Yeah, for sure. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. Um, I do feel like we 
oftentimes do draw on the expertise of our staff. So there are teachers within PLI who are like, I know every single thing there is to know about Nearpod, for example. Let me host office hours for you. And anybody who has questions, come visit with me. I'm going to share all my tips and tricks and trade secrets. Uh, we also have our people who are, this is what they're paid to do. We have curriculum specialists on staff, and it is their job to create resources for the teachers to access freely whenever they need it, to also come up with different courses and they're doing everything they can to make sure you feel equipped to do this well. As far as supplies and equipment, yes, everything that you or the students need essentially you, is provided. I mean, with, there are definitely exceptions, but I mean, as far as software platforms go, if you're required to use it, we're giving you access to it. Um, and then with the students, they're, they have access to the Chromebooks in their classrooms, headsets that they can listen to you with. So uh, as far as all of the stuff that you need to be successful to do it, you are going to get that with PLI. All right, so let's talk about the HR benefits. We talked a little bit about, so what are the advantages? I can sleep in, I don't have a commute, but what about actual benefits? So we're talking about uh, medical benefits, dental, vision, et cetera. John, what can you tell us about that? So we do offer full benefits if you choose to sign up, um, even if you're only working three hours a day, you can still get full benefits if you choose to do so. You can also decline them if you choose, but we offer full healthcare, dental, vision, 401k after one year of employment with us. And I am missing one thing that I was going to talk. Oh, we're also offering full-time positions for next year. So that is something new. That is a perk. So our teachers don't even know that. Joseph doesn't even know that yet. But yes, we're offering full-time teachers positions next year. So that we want to make sure that you can work as much as you want to, but also take care of your families. Your family and your spouse can also be included with your benefits if you choose to do so. That is completely up to you. But we just want to put that out there. Perfect. Wonderful. Thank you. Sam, do you have anything to add to that? Yep. No, I think John covered it. <laughs> Perfect. So do teachers have to build their own curriculum? Who can take a stab at this one? No, uh, you do not. Uh, curriculum is a huge endeavor. And uh, we are, this is a professional teaching, uh, truly a profession. I don't mean that uh, certain places because each state has different standards of uh, certification and uh, process. And also there are private schools have a different a kind of a standards, but no, we have, the answer is very simple. We have a troop of people who, who do the curriculum writing, but also we have evaluators and to quality uh, checks. And uh, that was the first thing that I like when I first was interviewed and I said, you know, and they said, oh, we have a Chinese curriculum. I thought, yes, yeah. that was just like the greatest burden <laughs> off my shoulder. <laughs> That's awesome. And like I was saying earlier, we have an entire curriculum team and the curriculum department, that team, their job is to fill in any gaps. Oftentimes what happens is when proximity places you at a school district, you're using that school district scope and sequence. You're using that school district's curriculum. They're saying, hey, we just need somebody who can deliver this, who is a certified teacher. Remember, every single one of our teachers are state certified. We do not just put anybody in the classroom. You can't just have your associate's degree and teach for us. You do have to be state certified. As far as reciprocity goes, proximity learning will help you with reciprocity. So if you've identified classes that you'd like to teach in another state, you just don't aren't certified in there yet, proximity is going to work with you to make that happen. So uh, in all of most of those cases, those schools are like, hey, we need you to use this curriculum. Now, if there is a new class or a new course offering, and they're like, we just don't have curriculum for that yet. Well, proximity most likely does. And they're going to hand that over to you. And if they don't have it, they're going to start developing it. So it is not your job as the teacher to develop curriculum. You're going to get it handed to you one way or another. Awesome. Thank you. Those were all of the scripted questions we had. I'm going to leave this up here with our information to reach out to anybody, but don't go yet. We have over 50 questions in queue. So I'm going to start at the top. I'm just going to start going down. Some of them are duplicates. And so we'll just hit live as uh, we're answering them. So this one's for John. How long after applying does it take to hear back from proximity? Usually two to three days if we're not swamped. Like right now we're starting to hire for 22, 23. So it may take a little bit more time, but usually within two days, we are responding and scheduling an interview with you. Perfect. Thank you. Let's go to Sam. Will you be discussing tips on the hiring process for those of us who are already very interested in working for you? 
Um, if you are interested in working with Proximity, if you have already applied and you haven't heard back on your application, send me an email um, and we will we'll definitely touch base. Perfect. So uh, Sam's email is right here. It's sy at proxlearn.com. So I encourage you to uh, send her an email. Like she said, if you've already applied, we also have Morgan who just dropped in the chat, please apply here. So click that link if you're interested in applying. How does the salary and benefits compare with teaching at public school and what benefits does proximity offer? So we've already discussed those benefits. As far as the comparison to public school, it truly depends on where you live and where you teach, because we know some places pay your teachers $70,000 other places might pay teachers $28,000. So just like teaching across the country, pay, rate, pay rates are all across the board. When you teach with proximity, it doesn't matter where you teach, but it's going to matter how that compares to what you're used to. So there is basically flat rates you get paid. Is it per course, Sam, that you get paid? It's based on the number of classes you teach and then how many days per week those classes meet. Perfect. Thanks so much. Next one, uh, we've already answered. Do you ha have health benefit packages? Yes. Next one, how big are the class sizes? Uh, Diana, do you want to just talk about how big class sizes have been for you? Uh, I've had, you know, average about 15, like a normal, typical brick and mortar classroom size. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, parent teacher contact. Does that happen? Uh, Joseph, you want to tell us, do you normally talk to parents or teachers? This is the one of the greatest things that all of you should have listened to this. You will never, almost never talk to a principal from the local school or from a parent. And, uh, you know, parents are, when I taught in the great rich neighborhood and the first grade and in kindergarten, I happen to talk, have, have taught every grades. And uh, kindergarten, first grade, parents are coming to volunteer. By the time they reach eighth grade, no, you'll never get a hold of parents mm -hmm. until the, you're, <laughs> they, there's trouble, right? But no, we have like a managers who like communicate for us and advocate, uh, advocate for us. No, sure. we, we don't have to, uh, normally we don't get in direct contact with the parents or uh, teachers will go through our um, respective department. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much. Um, just a reminder, please put your questions in the Q&A box, not the chat box. The chat box has been full of a lot of comments, so we can't really manage the questions coming through there. So please do put them in the Q&A. Next one, how is teacher reciprocity handled? For example, I'm certified in special ed in New York. How can I work for New Jersey or even Chicago? John, you want to take that? I will. So um, we follow the state guidelines for the state that you're going to actually teach in. So you may live in New York, but you may teach in Alabama. So if that happens, we will help you get licensed in Alabama. We paid for that. We have a certification specialist who will walk you through the process. All you have to do is submit your application. You'll receive your new license and it is your license, not ours. So we also make you more marketable if you ever decide to go back to a brick and mortar school. Ah, that's wonderful. Thank you. Edgar wants to know, how is this program different from other online teaching companies? And do we provide the lesson materials or make them ourselves? First of all, Edgar, we're the best. It would, if I didn't say that, I wouldn't be doing the company justice, right? Like, yeah, so we think what we're doing, we are the best at what we're doing. We clearly have a lot of dedicated people on staff. The teachers who we have love being teachers with proximity as demonstrated by Joseph and Diana, who are our guests today. Um, I would love to hear from Joseph how is this program different, do you think, based on what you know of other virtual learning programs since you've been doing this for so long? I've got all the, we have the, PLI has the best support you're going to ever get. It's better supported than, I feel I, I have been better supported than I was in a brick and mortar school. That's Unless, I don't know, that I never taught in private schools, so maybe different. And Chicago has two very expensive uh, private schools, and one of them I did teach at a guest lecture or whatever, Latin school. They do have better support. <laughs> the tuition is thirty five thousand a year. Oh, wow. Yeah, Latin school, high school. So now, besides that, I don't see. I don't know any other school has a system that I taught. You know, online some tutoring or has the better uh, support by uh, staff and teachers. It's amazing, actually. 
Um, one thing I'll also add to that is I know some of the companies that would be considered competitors to PLI. Uh, one thing that we do differently is we always put a live teacher in the classroom. We do not just share your recordings with students. And oftentimes there is a bad rap for virtual education staffing organizations to really just say, hey, here's a program, log in and go at it at your own pace. And that's not what proximity does. There is always a live teacher that is a live streamed teacher. And there is that interaction with students the entire class. You are asking your students questions. They are responding. You're having them do little cheers, chants, and dances just like you would in person. They are presenting projects to you live. All of that really sets us apart because you do have the opportunity to build relationships with your students. Uh, Rochelle would like to know what hardware is required and what happens if you lose connection. Sam, do you want to take that one? So um, you do need to have a computer that's less than five years old. Um, unfortunately, we cannot use Chromebooks. So if you do have a Chromebook, you would have to uh, purchase a new computer. Um, and then if you lose con connection, things happen. Um, we just ask that you know you have good enough internet that you're not losing connection every like 10 minutes. And if you do lose connection, you jump back in and pick up where you left off. Perfect. And we also recommend that you always have um, contingency plans readily available. So you can message somebody, whether it's your vice or assistant principal or your principal, one of your other colleagues and say, hey, you know, we're experiencing a terrible storm. Can you please log into my class? Or you'll have a facilitator on campus that you can text and you say, hey, I can't live stream right now, but have the students open their textbooks to this page and they can answer the questions there. So to always have backup plans in case you do lose connection, and we kind of walk you through that as well. Uh, Somebody else would like to know, are teachers lectures recorded? And if so, are they posted anywhere online? Also, if so, does the teacher retain the intellectual property rights when and how their stuff is posted? If the lectures are not recorded or posted, then never mind. Um, John, would you like to take that one? I kind of knew you were coming to me. So yes, <laughs> um, we do record all lessons, but that is to support you. Because as a principal, I will walk down the hall and actually observe classrooms. We can't do that virtually. So we record lessons that way we can watch if things go on or if a student was out, we can send that recording to the student or just make sure that everything's where it needs to be. But then two, if you are creating content for us, meaning that if we ask you to write curriculum for us, that belongs to PLI. But your lesson plans, anything that you use to support your curriculum in the classroom will always belong to you. We're not going to take that away from you. So if you leave and go back to a brick and mortar or go to another company, that is still your content that you can use. But if we pay you to write content for us, that belongs to PLI. Thanks so much, John. And that's just another opportunity for another stream of revenue is there are opportunities like writing curricula. So you can sign up to just be a teacher. You can sign up to be a teacher and a curriculum writer. Um, of course, we can't guarantee you'll get any of those. These are all application processes. Um, but if you'd like to throw your name in the hat for some of these opportunities like writing curriculum, that's always an option as well. What sort of daily schedule might an elementary teacher expect to have? We went over that previously. It is uh, you build your own schedule. You can start as early as four in the morning if you'd like to start working on possibly the East Coast. And then if you'd like to sleep in a little bit later, maybe you can start your day around noon and you'll be helping those West Coast students who just woke up. So you do have the opportunity to build that schedule out however you choose to. Uh, how does PLI work for students who are in the younger grades, like K through three? Diana, do you have any experience working with the younger grades? I do not. I teach high school. Okay, so sorry. Uh, Joseph, do you teach? I know you teach the Mandarin and all that. Do you have? I ever taught. Uh, <laughs> yes, I have taught uh, kindergarten Mandarin classes. Um, so those were special negotiations uh, to local school. Um, the younger crowd, we usually have them do uh, twenty minutes to forty minute, and you will break into different activities and use a lot of music and sing songs and some videos interspersed with that. So there are, we, we do. I actually, I think, <laughs> yeah, you believe or not. And we also have PE classes and all that stuff, music and PE. And of course the lower grades, yes. The answer is yes. And <laughs> but it depends on the school's needs. Chicago only instituted a full day a kindergarten. I think it was only like a 10 years ago or something like that. So I think most schools now is a full day, right? For, for kindergarten. Yeah. So. Yes, we do. 
Perfect. Yes, we do. And remember, we are live streaming into schools that already exist. So these are not students who are just kind of coming to PLI whenever they feel like it. This is their real school. And most of these students are walking into a real classroom, sitting in their desks, and there is a facilitator or teacher's aide that is in that classroom, making sure they can address things like boo-boos and bathroom breaks and maybe student fights and things like that. So you've got support in person, um, but you are still going to be delivering that lesson just like you were there with them. What's the class size limit for elementary and do you need to meet with all the students full time? What does the schedule look like? So the class size is based on the school. Remember, we are not the school. We just support the schools that already exist. So whatever Dallas ISD, for example, I like to give that one a lot because I'm from Dallas area. So it's just kind of fun. But whatever, if we have our contract with them and we go to one of their schools, we follow their class size limits. And no, you do not have to meet with every single student or parent individually. Are students required to have their cameras on at all times. Uh, Diana, can you take that? It is highly required, like recommended for the students too, but sometimes, you know, districts may have bandwidth issues and they might be asked to turn their cameras off, but, you know, they may also come up with an alternative where you're, you have a camera mounted at the front of the classroom so you could see the entire class. So it just depends on the district and what their internet looks like at their own school. Perfect. Thank you. Um, what LMS does PLI use and does PLI provide instructional resources? Do we choose the instructional resources or do teachers have input into that? Uh, let's go back to Sam for that one. Sure. So we use um, Canvas for our LMS. Um, and then as far as instructional resources, we provide teachers access to Nearpod, uh, MobyMax, USA Test Prep. Um, and then we also encourage you to use other um, virtual or um, instructional technology like um, Kahoot or Quizlet or um, anything like that to kind of help aid your instruction. Perfect, thank you. Um, so somebody is saying that they have a lot of experience in the community college level, um, but they would like to teach history and government in K-12. Would I need a certification? Yes, you have to have a state certification. Whatever state you are in and whatever content area you would like to teach, you must be certified in. And like John had mentioned earlier, if you're trying to teach in multiple states, PLI will help you get reciprocation, but you have to have something to start with. Okay, next question. Um, Oh, and that's another state certification question. Do you have a non-compete contract? So I could not tutor with another tutoring company. Before I ask John that question, let me just tell you, we are not just a tutoring company. We do offer some tutoring services, but we are primarily certified educators who live stream into real classrooms. Um, but is there a non-compete contract, John? There is not. We preach and breed flexibility. So no, there is not. Okay, sounds good. Somebody wants to know if I'm a teacher working four hours a day, five days a week, can you give me a ballpark of how much I would make? John? So that really depends on the duration of classes because some classes are 60 minutes, some are 90 minutes, and some schools have a really weird schedule where they have two hour classes. So we would have to look at the schedule for the school and we can work with you on that. Email me and I'll be happy to hop in a Zoom session with you and talk to you about that. Perfect. So please do email John. His email is on our screen right now. It's jrollick at proxlearn.com. And that way you'll be able to start having some of those more specific compensation questions based on your particular scenario. Are you looking to hire for the 2022-2023 year? And do you work with year-round schools? Samantha, what do you want to say about that? We are absolutely hiring for the 22-23 school year. Uh, if you're interested in teaching with us next year, please apply. We will reach out, schedule an interview. Um, and we will begin the hiring process next week. Perfect. Do we also have year round schools? I, yes, we do. All right, good to know. Um, and remember how we said we're not just a tutoring company? It's because we do have some tutoring services, definitely not what we primarily boast, but they exist. And so, yes, again, you know how we said there are these other opportunities to earn multiple streams of revenue. It's not just teaching all the time. Maybe it's also curriculum writing. Maybe it's also tutoring. You have those opportunities with proximity. Uh, so do teachers also grade the papers? Diana, are you grading papers? Well, I'm math. Um, but I do create, you know, assignments where they have to upload their work. So then I can go through and grade. Um, if you're using PLI content, a lot of their, you know, assignments are already pre-programmed self-grade. So you could just rely on that as assessments. 
That's awesome. Thank you. All right. Do we need elementary Spanish teachers or just middle and high school Spanish teachers, John? We need K through 12 Spanish teachers, French teachers, ASL teachers. So if you're interested, please apply. Perfect. Are there jobs only for people who have teaching certs in the USA? John? Yes. Yes. You yep. have to be licensed to teach in at least one state in the U.S. And you also have to live in the U.S. You have to have a U.S. address. You can live overseas three months out of the year and work with us. That's fine. But you can't have a permanent address overseas. Perfect. Thank you. Are there opportunities for teachers to get paid for providing professional development? I have a master's degree in ed tech and have worked as a tech coach. Carla, thanks so much for that question. And the way you would have those opportunities would be if you were a teacher and you were saying, I would like to offer um, office hours or a training. At this point, John, we're not hiring external trainers, right? Because we have such a talented staff, right? That is correct. And that's one thing that we focus on is promoting from within. We like to promote our teachers into leadership roles with the company. So we do have teachers who are writing curriculum or leading PD with us. So come work for us as a teacher, do a great job and get promoted. Sounds good. Thank you. Do you hire curriculum specialists? If so, where do I find those openings? Sam, do we have a different link besides the teaching link? I will drop that in the chat right now. Thank you. Thanks, John. All right. I'd like to simultaneously apply to work at PLI and sign up for the PDs to be equipped to virtually teach. Can I do that? So, John, are we saying pretty much right now the only people who can attend our PDs are if they're actively employed with us? Is that right? That is correct. And that is one caveat. We do not offer PD to everyone because we do try to keep some of that stuff in house because our competitors like to borrow things. So we don't uh, <laughs> share everything. Fair enough, thank you. All right, I've been trying to look for a special ed teacher job with proximity, but there doesn't seem to be many vacancies. Has that changed recently? John? So we do um, have vacancies in SPED. Um, I think, well, let me back up. We always have SPED positions available. Right now we filled all of them, but as we move into 22, 23, we will have plenty of SPED positions available. Great, thank you. It says, if you have a class, are you just filling in until they find an in-person teacher? No, whenever we get a class assigned to proximity learning, that school has signed a contract with PLI most of the time for at least one year. And that means you are gonna be teaching those same kiddos, that same content area, at least for an entire school year, which is why John had said previously, like this isn't temporary. And if you do take on a class, you've got to commit to finishing that class. We can't just have people come and go because we are not substitutes. We are their full-time teacher. Oftentimes, for anybody who's wondering, proximity is asked to do this either because there is a massive teacher shortage or because they're teaching content area in which nobody in their geographic region is certified in. Like Mandarin Chinese, probably not super popular in rural Oklahoma. So we need people like Joseph who can live stream to provide those equal opportunities for education in places that otherwise wouldn't have access to them, which is why PLI primarily is about providing access to students. We are very much a mission-driven organization, and that's what we're here to do. And next question, thank you for answering yes to having music programs, but this part wasn't answered. How do they work online? So the same thing, it's just you are a live stream teacher. You are in front of your students. They can see you. You can see them. You guys can interact with each other. They can present to you. And so whatever you need to do to convey your music lessons to your students in real live time, then that's, that's how you work online with them. I can, can I only work in the state that I'm certified in? We've talked about that. We do help with reciprocation. What if your certification is expired because you were retiring? It would be on you to renew that. And then once it's renewed, you'd be eligible to work with us. Where exactly do you apply on your site? Please do look in the chat where that's been dropped as a link. If somebody had said, um, where do I submit my resume? All of that information will be in those links. Uh, do we provide retirement or a 401k plan or the teacher retirement system? John, can you speak to that? The PLI does not contribute to your state retirement plan, but we do have a 401k that you can sign up for and contribute to that and use that for your retirement. But we work in all 50 states and it would be really difficult to contribute to all 50 states retirement plans. Perfect. Thank you. Do you provide continuing education benefits? Yes, a lot of them constantly. 
what is the salary structure? We've talked about that. You will need to schedule a Zoom session with John if you'd like to speak about your specifics. Can you personalize the curriculum with tools and resources that you know as a teacher, just as much as you typically would in a brick and mortar? So there is typically a scope and sequence that you follow, and then you have some flexibility in what that delivery looks like. And of course, if you have access to resources that you know are doing good for your students, then yes, you'll have the opportunity to use that because at the end of the day, we're providing high quality educational content for our students. Uh, we talked about uh, reciprocity a lot. We've talked about pay. So I'm hitting answered on a lot of these. Um, I'd be interested in teaching summer school. Yes, we do that. Uh, how do you handle grading? We've also discussed that. Are you hiring for CTE? Yes. Uh, the role of the classroom facilitator. How do they interact with you as the teacher? Uh, Diana, can you talk to us about what interaction with the facilitator looks like? Yes. So they're their primary communicator to the district. So any, you know, testing days, schedule changes, grades, like they're handling all classroom management really on their end. Um, they're your communicator to, to the directly to the principal. So you're not talking to the principal. They are. So they're reporting, you know, any failing students, you know, concerns. They're handling, you know, any issues in the classroom. So they have the primary classroom management, you know, uh, role in the classroom. Perfect. Thank you. Along those lines, Carla wants to know if you need to communicate with parents regarding assignments or behaviors, what do you do? So through Canvas, it's really awesome. Parents can opt in to see their child's grades so they can see, you know, assignments that they posted, any comments that we make. Um, they contact, you know, the TA and they'll have conversations with the TA. Um, if need be, then they'll contact the teacher. And then, you know, we have leadership that also gets involved with that. So you always have accountability on our end. Um, so it can never just be like, oh, here he said, she said type of thing. So there's always accountability in the company. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, John, another question for you. Somebody wants to know if they have a temporary teaching certificate in their state and they're pursuing their professional certificate, are they eligible? Yes and no. And I hate to say it that way. Um, it's partly because you have a temporary certificate and most of our teachers have to get reciprocity and you cannot receive reciprocity with a temporary certificate. So I highly encourage you to complete that process at least have an initial license and that gives us some wiggle room, but we do want you to have a standard professional license to work with us if that is possible. Perfect, thank you. Uh, John, one more thing. Somebody says on our hiring site, it only says 2021, 2022 school year. They don't see 2022 to 23 yet. Are those positions posted? So you can use that site to actually go ahead and apply. We will still hire you there. I don't flip it over to 22, 23 until July 1 because it confuses people. So I'll do that on July 1. Sounds good. Thank you. Uh, so somebody's curious if I already teach in the public school system, can I also teach with you? As long as your schedule will allow and as long as you're already not in a contract with your school that says you can't do that. So proximity would allow it, but you'd have to check with your school to make sure they would allow that. Can I piggyback on that? Yeah, sure. Um, I would also want to caution anyone who's going to do that. Please make sure you're going to be at home. So let's say you're going to work in a brick and mortar school from eight to 12, and you're going to work with us from one until four. Please make sure you're at home when you're doing that, not in your old job, just because there's going to be fire alarms going off, kids walking down the hall, the bell sounding. It gets really confusing for our candidates, for our teachers and our clients and our students. So please make sure you're in a quiet, conducive education setting for every, every class that you teach. Perfect. Thank you for that. Uh, somebody, this is a great question. Am I required to assist with the end of the year state testing? Who wants to take that? No. no the thanks. answer is no. There you go. The local school, yeah. Perfect. They'll take care of that for you. And they also want to know any travel required. No, travel is not required. The only time travel would be required is if you continue to move your way up the ranks in proximity learning and you start to get like director level roles. There are a couple of uh, all team meetings at our headquarters in Austin, Texas that happen just a couple of times throughout the year, but that is not for your general teaching positions. Another one, if I don't have a state teaching certificate, but I do have my TESOL certificate to teach ESL, would this be okay to teach English to foreign students? We actually don't do that. So we do not teach English to foreign students. We only teach in schools that already exist across the country. And uh, you do have to have a teaching certificate, not just the uh, TESOL certificate. 
Do you hire year round or only specific times during the year, like in the spring and the summer? Uh, Sam, would you like to take that? We hire year round. We have been hiring since, um, since I started and we will continue to hire year round until the end of time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, as teachers, are, are teachers allowed to use their own materials to supplement curriculum? We talked about that. Yes. Do we have to collect data? Uh, Sam, can you also just talk about the platform that we use and are we collecting data from it? So, I mean, we use Canvas as our LMS. That's the platform that we use. Um, of course, you should always be collecting data because that's how you can, you know, are the best teacher that you can be is by collecting data, figuring out where your students are at and what you can do to better reach them. Perfect, thank you. What happens if you need to take a day off, John? Are there substitutes? There are. So we, Sammy actually does a really good job of hiring subs for us as well. So um, we do have some retired teachers who do not want to teach with us. They just want to sub a few days a week. So you can also sub. That information is located on our job site. So you will see a virtual sub position. So if you're interested in subbing, please fill out that app. Sammy will reach out to you and get you in. Subs are paid based on the number, uh, based on the duration of their classes. So you're paid by the minute instead of by the hour or anything like that. But we can walk you through that process during the interview. Perfect. Thank you. Another question, are specific schools assigned to each teacher? Essentially, you get to pick, right? There's a roster of open classes and you're like, I'd really like that one. That fits in my schedule. I'm certified to teach that. Let's take that too. So you get to pick it and your schools could be all across the country or you could have the same school all day long or at least the same district. So all of those are totally up to you. And there is definitely flexibility there. Uh, two questions from Christine. How would you describe the demand for highly qualified virtual educators for next year? Or more specifically, how many open positions do you have? And then how many work days each year are your teachers committed to? John, you look excited to answer this one. So that really depends on the district because we follow the bell schedule, the calendar, and curriculum for the schools that you work in. So if that school's out for a teacher work day, you're out. I can't give you definitive information. We'd have to hire you, get you enrolled, and then we can give you the calendar for the entire school day. But most schools have a 180-day calendar with days off for Christmas, holidays, things of that nature. So if the school's out, you're out, you will still be paid while you're out on those days. So you don't have to worry about not being paid or anything like that. Perfect. Thank you. How does online teacher uh, deal with discipline? Joseph, how do you deal with discipline? Oh, it's a real simple and easy. You can mute them. <clears throat> or you can remove them from the classroom on, in Zoom, but you, I would not, usually you'll be trained thoroughly in terms of around the, what kind of situation scale you should remove them or mute them. And also the, in terms of a classroom management is entirely, this is one of the great paradise of teaching. I think if you want to be a teacher, this is like a dream job because the TA on the ground is responsible for managing the classroom in terms of you know rowdy ones and all of that it's there is no uh for you to no need for you to raise your voice or anything very good thank you if a student is homesick would they still join our live class from home or do they only join when they're at school diana they have the access to canvas at any time so they can just click on the link and join right from school it's another benefit of being online is that you know they may have surgery they may be sick but they still able to come on and they cannot skip a beat with proximity it's awesome wonderful thank you i know we only have three minutes left so i'm trying to scroll through some of these questions it doesn't look like we've addressed yet one of them is performance reviews uh john can you speak to performance reviews I can. So our teachers are observed in um, our ATS called Talent Ed, and it usually happens once a month. We try to come in um, and do a formal observations. So we will do walkthroughs during the week. So you'll see your VP just kind of pop in for a second, check on you, make sure everything's OK, and then they'll pop out. So it's very similar to working in a brick and mortar school system. We record your observations. We review them with you. We try to build on the things that you need to work on. And then at the end of the year, we have a summative evaluation that you'll complete. And then we use that to determine your employment for the next year. Thank you. Is there a vaccine requirement for online teachers at proximity? There is no, not. there is not. Uh, perfect. If I'm hired, what is the training time frame? Sammy, you want to take that one? Yes. Um, so training is a week. Um, so you will do a week of training um, and then you'll be able to get into your classes. 
Great, another HR question. Do, can you earn sick days or is this treated as an hourly position? Oh, you're muted, John. You can earn five PTO days as long as you're teaching 20 hours or more of live classes every week. So yes, you can earn PTO just like in a school. You have to use your PTO in full days though. You can't take periods off or half days. It has to be a full day. Great, thank you. Would you be responsible for following students' IEPs? Uh, Diana, do you follow students' IEPs? I've only had like maybe one or two students and I did. You know, I think she had like a hearing impalement, but most of the accommodations didn't apply to me because she had a headset. So you do follow IEPs, but you're not usually required to manage them. The TA will be making sure that they get all the accommodations that they need. Perfect. Thank you. All right, y'all. It is 3.59. Well, now it is four o'clock. Uh, I'm sorry we did not get an opportunity to get through all uh, almost 200 questions, guys. So we had a lot of questions and we did our very best to answer as many as we possibly could. If you still feel like you have questions that we weren't able to get to, we do encourage you to please send an email. We've got in the chat all of the links to uh, the website, the application process. We hope this was helpful. We thoroughly enjoyed being able to share the good work that's happening at Proximity Learning with you. And we really hope to have you on board with us soon. And maybe you'll be able to sit in as one of the panelists next time we do this. So thank you guys so much. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Monday.